Okay, this is an overview of the general concept of data structures. And in this uh, video, we'll talk about some of the different uh, most common data structures and what they're used for. In follow-up videos, we'll implement some of these data structures in C Sharp uh, so that we can see how you build uh, dynamic data structures. A data structure in general is a composite uh, creation that links together data following a set of organizational rules. So it's either an access rule, like uh, the first one in is the first one out, or, or it's a, a hierarchical data relationship, like uh, the things that are greater than this go this direction, the things that are less than this go that direction. So there's usually rules associated with each type of data structure and uh, that governs how the data is added and retrieved from the object. Uh, and in order to do this, a data structure is usually built out of structures that contain the data elements that are being stored, linking elements that uh, connect uh, data together, and then the logic uh, code that, uh, that enforces a particular set of rules on that data. Uh, typical uh, most common uh, dynamic data structures are things like lists, stacks, and queues, and trees. Um, dictionaries are also uh, widely used, and uh, graphs are a very theoretical uh, data structure. Uh, and uh, understanding graphs, uh, trees are types of graphs, etc. So uh, you'll you'll have experience with many of these things. Uh, lists and stacks and queues are all over the place in computer science. And so uh, understanding how these structures are put together and why each one is uh, a good choice for a particular problem uh, is, is quite helpful. Most of these data structures, certainly the dynamic data structures, are built out of something that's conceptualized as a thing called a node. And a node is a combination of data and linking. And uh, so in most cases, like in C-sharp, you would implement a node as a class. Uh, object orientation in this case uh, lends itself very well to, to building these data structures. Um, so nodes will generally be linked together in some fashion with a set of these um, logic rules. And from that, you'll be able to build the different types of classes. Uh, inside the node, the data that can be stored could be, for example, a primitive type like a string, or it can be a very complex type like an object. So if you have a class that defines, say, a person, which would have first name, last name, and address, and age, and you know, hire date, and all these kinds of things, that object, that class for person, can be used as the data element of a node. So the node class might include the person class, as uh, an object inside of it. And then the link is a reference to a node. Because nodes are attached to each other, they'll use reference variables inside of one node to link it, uh, connect it to another node. So the first one we're going to talk about is the stack. And a stack is a data structure that's um, composed of, of nodes that are added at the top. And when you remove items from the stack, you also remove from the top. So a stack is a data structure where the only access you have is through the top of the stack. Uh, this implements what we call last in, first out logic, LIFO, uh, last in, first out. And uh, you can think of this as a good example of this is uh, washing a stack of dirty dishes. You have a friend who's bringing you dishes from clearing the tables and they're stacking them up and you're standing at the sink washing. So which plate do you grab? You don't grab the fifth plate down, you grab the top plate. And so whatever the most recent plate to arrive on the top of the stack is, the last one in, that is the first one you grab. So you will work off the top of the stack, plucking off a dirty dish, washing it and setting it aside, while the other person is also adding additional dirty dishes to the top of the stack. So the very last one to be washed is the very first plate that uh, that arrived in the stack. So um, uh, last in, first out is a stack. And stacks are used all over the place in computers. 
uh, to manage uh, lots of processes uh, that need to follow this last in uh, functionality. Uh, in, in terms of what a stack would look like conceptually out of nodes, you generally have a reference pointer, which we call top, which is a property of the stack itself. And then that begins the linking of additional nodes, which are linked downward uh, uh, from uh, each one to the next one. So you work from the top, you add to the top, you remove from the top, and then each subsequent one is linked from there. Uh, the queue, uh, this, uh, for those that speak the British version of English, uh, the English language, they, they would generally understand the queue uh, to be like a line. Um, you queue up. Uh, in, in the American version, we get in line. And so uh, when you're thinking about a queue, you can think about uh, a line at the checkout. Uh, a queue implements the first in, first out. So the first person that gets in line is the first one to be checked out and to leave. And uh, when we implement this, we implement this queue with a head and a tail. So new items are added to the tail of the list and uh, items are always removed from the head of the list. Uh, a queue would, would definitely uh, violate the rule of a queue if you try to cut in line. People in line would say, hey, you, you, you can't cut, no cuts. Um, because uh, when you're in line, you all know and understand that the first person that gets there gets served first. Uh, so this is a queue, and uh, there's a lot of functions and uses in computer science for things that come in order. Uh, pro processing data in a buffer, for example, is like a queue. Uh, new stuff gets added to the back of the buffer, and, and the oldest stuff, the first stuff to be processed, is processed from the front of the buffer. Uh, the next item to talk about is the list, and a list is uh, a, a, another one of these data structures that's composed out of nodes, but in this case, we generally have random access to the items in the list, and um, you can kind of think of this as sort of the lineup in, in gym class. You're going to pick teams, so everybody kind of lines up. It doesn't matter who goes where in the list. Um, somebody that's a late liner upper can just get in between two people that are already there and those people will just shift over to the sides. And then when you start selecting your teams, you can pull from anywhere in the list. They're removed from the list from their current location. And so um, uh, a list is usually implemented, at least I, I usually implement uh, doubly linked lists. This is an example where the node has two links in it instead of one. Uh, this makes it much easier to implement addition and removal of items from the list. And so generally we keep a head and a tail uh, on the list. And uh, another pointer that's often used is the current um, reference. And that's used for iteration through the list. Like where are you if you're sequentially searching or, or um, sorting the list. And the final one that I'm going to talk about here uh, briefly is the tree. And uh, the tree is a hierarchical arrangement. In other words, there's, there's meaning to who's above who in the list. There's, there's parent and child relationships in a list. And one of the most common um, trees is a binary tree where each item in the list can have at most one parent and can have at most two children although they can also be null. So the root of the tree is the item that has no parent. It's, it's owned by the tree itself. In this case, we would have a reference variable called root pointing to it. And then each additional node is linked as a child, either left or right of that, um, of that parent node. And so here's an example of a few nodes that are linked together in a tree. This is another case where you would have multiple links in your node. And uh, in this case, we would interpret one link as left and one link as right. Uh, binary trees are often used for binary search algorithms and things like that. So, so the question then is, where do I get these dynamic data structures? Well, if you're working in the .NET languages or many of the other uh, languages like Python and, uh, and Java, 
uh, a lot of these data structures are built for you and are available in the framework. In .NET, there's lists and there's uh, collections and stacks and uh, many, many more. Uh, if you're actually in a production environment and want to use a list, uh, I would use the .NET ones. Uh, they're fully implemented. They're 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 well crafted. They do a lot of stuff for you. Uh, they uh, understand how to work with other types of objects in the hierarchy, uh, and etc. But why would I ever build my own? Well, I would build my own one if there's a type that doesn't exist in the .NET. So, for example, a binary tree. Uh, the tree data structure doesn't really exist in .NET directly, uh, so I might build a tree that might meet the needs of my particular data. Uh, but in our case, uh, for these lessons, we're going to build some of these uh, objects, and we're going to build them uh, because we want to learn how uh, data structures are constructed. Uh, the ones that we build in the subsequent uh, videos will not be fully implemented, fully tested, fully versatile, uh, data structures. They will be uh, bare bones uh, examples of of some of these um, data structures in order for us to understand how uh, data structures are constructed. So the next set of videos will be C sharp uh, implementations of the stack, the queue, the list, and the tree.